Tainted Grill does immediately grab your attention graphics wise, but it sits at a 93 positive on Steam and an 82 on Metacritic, which of course really high. Before we start, I want to thank Awaken Realms for sponsoring the video. Really supports the channel. Check the game out via the link in the video description. And I'm happy that they did because it puts this very interesting game on our radar. And Dennis, you've been playing a lot of it, right? Like what makes it so unique? I get that from a first glance, like you said, you might not be immediately convinced. But after playing a bit, you will probably get hooked on what is a very addicting loop of combat and the rewards that you get from that, which are also really cool. Now, I really enjoy roguelike but I don't have that much experience with deck builder games and those are sort of the two main inspirations for this but it didn't take long for me to get accustomed to how the combat works and what strategies I should be using and other stuff like that and I think that's already one of the game's most unique points that it's kind of a blend of different genres right like you have this hub area and the overworld map you walk around which you can explore the area you can interact with different objects you find but then as soon as you get close to an enemy the game switches to a turn-based card battle system where you fight different groups of monsters and they all have their own unique abilities and attack patterns. So in very basic terms, the structure of the game is you pick a class which you play as, you start in the hub area and then you go out into the world to defeat the boss of the area, then you return, do some more preparations and then you go looking for the next boss until you win or you die and restart. So you mentioned the hub area, can you, can you tell me a little more about that? Yeah, sure thing. So you start every run in that hub area and the cool thing is you can find characters out in the world that you can send back there to open up new features. So like I found a blacksmith, that's the only one I found so far, but he already gave me access to runes that I could use for some nice passive mm -hmm. bonuses. And there are seven of them, seven of these NPCs to unlock in total. And once they join the hub, they will stay there forever. So even if you die. So there is a lot oh. of progression you can do in this hub area alone by just going out into the world and finding new people to join. And then apart from that, there are also mysterious strangers you can find in the world who don't join your village, but they do have their own story to tell. So I've come across this mysterious guy who sits rooted to a campfire a couple of times now. And each time you talk to him, you learn a little bit more about him. So there's also characters out there that have their own story for you to chase. Okay, and so the more I would imagine you play the game, the more you learn about their story, right? Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. So each run you kind of get a new piece of the puzzle. If oh, you want. nice. And in terms of combat, like any unique features there that really stand out? Uh, yeah, for sure. One of the things that I think is really cool and interesting is the weirdness mechanic with a Y, which is also the reason that the background can seem sort of distorted and warped in the, in the background. It's basically a source of magic that has spread across the land, but it factors into the gameplay as well. Because every so often you draw one of these tainted force cards and they will stay in your hand for one turn and always have an effect for if you play them and an effect for if you don't play them. So it could be something like, oh, you do more damage on this turn if you play the card, but then if you don't play it, you get extra armor mm. instead. That's, I think, totally a fun twist to the familiar deck builder gameplay. And in terms of roguelike, like, you of course have to die a lot and replay a lot, but how do they make sure that everyone is exciting and do you lose everything each time or do you also have like a progression that happens in between runs? I mean, there, there's enough for, to say for both. There are some things that reset each run, like the map layout is random and you start each run with your character at level one. So any cards you earned that you added to your deck from the previous run and consumables like health potions don't stay. But there's also a lot of permanent progression that also adds to the replayability of the game. Like we already talked about the hub area, so those unlocks are permanent. Right. Like the, my blacksmith will be there forever now. Um, but you can also buy permanent upgrades with some of the resources you find, like making your health potions heal more. And then the big thing is that at the end of each run, uh, you get a score and that score is added to a sort of general XP bar that lets you unlock new cards and new classes as well. And specifically, these classes add a lot to the replayability of the game. Yeah, you mentioned the classes now multiple times already. So how many classes are there? And can you give some examples of what these classes can do? Yeah, for sure. So there are nine different ones. You have three archers, three sort of melee fighters, and three caster summoners. And all of them have their own unique passive and ultimate abilities. Plus, there are some cards that are unique to specific classes as well. So you start out with a melee class, the Weird Hunter, who can stack a debuff on enemies to deal more damage and then use their ultimate to deal like one massive hit, which does more damage the more enemies you hit before you use it. And then pretty soon after, I unlock the Summoner, who is very different because they don't do much themselves in combat, but instead they summon minions to fight for them or to heal or tank damage for you. And then during combat, you buff them to grow stronger. You can also use your ultimate for that. 
So you start out kind of weak, but the longer combat goes on, the stronger you get as a summoner. And then finally, another class I tried that kind of seems similar to the summoner on paper is the Necromancer. Uh, because they both summon minions, they share some similar cards, but instead of buffing your minions and slowly growing stronger, you want to burn through them as quickly as possible, because if you do that, you charge your ultimate, and when you have your ultimate charged, you can transform into a powerful lich, which gives you access to a completely new set of cards. So you kind of want to do that as quickly as possible and just wipe your enemies out. I think that's pretty cool how classes seem similar but play completely different and they're also still updating the game right we just had an update with three new modes yeah exactly so what we just described goes for like the basic mode which is called the conquest mode but then if you like to focus more on combat there are since a short time since that new update two new modes that cater to that so you have endless power and endless misery both of which completely skip the overworld stuff and they're just a string of combat encounters. So you play through a fight and then after picking your rewards from that fight, you just move straight to the next one. And then the difference between them is that Endless Mystery is the more challenging one where you get a lot less upgrades to work with and challenging encounters like uh, Treasure Guardians or Legendary Encounters are a bit more frequent. So it's more of a challenge to see how far you can get. Whereas Endless Power is there if you just kind of want to casually play or experiment with some decks or cards because you get showered in rewards, so you get a lot stronger a lot quicker. Doesn't necessarily mean it's a cakewalk though, like I underestimated a specific boss and he completely demolished me after a couple of turns, but the general idea is that there's more of a casual mode uh, for you to enjoy that's not as hardcore as the other ones. Do you have footage of and that, then... of the uh, underestimate uh, boss? I do. Okay, we I'm see it right now. To everyone, <laughs> everyone yeah. is seeing that right now. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> and there was one other mode, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's another really cool mode that is basically a weekly challenge where you play the uh, basic mode, but with specific modifiers in place. So, for instance, uh, the one I tried, you had to play as the Necromancer, and every encounter raised the combat difficulty. So, the more you keep fighting, the more difficult it gets. And another cool thing to note is that all of those modes have a leaderboard as well. So, that's Endless Power, Endless Misery, and the Weekly Challenge. So, if you want to compare your progress or stats with other players, uh, you can do that too and see how well you did compared to your friends. Nice. And yeah, again, that's a recent update. Um, so, that's really cool that they keep supporting the game. It's like. Oh, not even 20 bucks. Uh, again, check the game out via the special link in the video description. Thanks, Janice, for explaining everything. Like, I, going into this, I was like, okay, it has really high scores, but what is this game? And now I, I very clearly understand it. So, thanks a lot for that. Of course, if you have questions, you can drop it in the comments down below. Subscribe for more gaming content. And, uh, yeah, don't forget to leave a like on the video. For now, we will speak to you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.